if there's people around, she's talking to them. So, yeah. kind of like me. <laughs> yak, yak, yak. Welcome yak, yak, to yak, yak. In a Perfect World with me, your host, Flash, and my co-hostage this afternoon slash evening. Ramsey. Da, 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 da. And uh, dun, dun, dun. I think we're live. Pretty sure. I think we are. I think we are. And it shows. <laughs> now live. In a place it's wild. And poor Grim. He has been suffering the wrath of the dreadful Com- Comcast the past yeah. week or so. They've been batting him around like an ugly third grader at a at a college party. Anyway, or like a redheaded stepchild. Yeah. Which you know, when I started doing the research on all of this, uh, who mm. was the slave and who wasn't a slave? And yeah. come on, get over it. We've all been slaves. Yeah, but yeah. you know. All of that fun stuff and how the Irish slaves actually had less value than the black slaves, you know. And and so the whole beat you or slap you like a redheaded stepchild, that really kind of sort of hits home because then you go, oh, wow, yeah, (laughs) Irish, yeah. So what's what's the deal with the Irish that everybody seems to value them? So because I love their accent and the music. So I I don't understand why they... They work Maybe hard. Because they, oh, they work hard? They do mm-hmm. things. Yeah, but you want to want to get the traditional shit out of the way before we oh, start. Oh, the boss and body. Okay, I, I need to move my cursor. Yeah. Because right now I have highlighted Thanks, the Thanks, Grimner. Grimmy did. There and he yes. is. Oh, Grim says because the Irish are weak and lazy. <laughs> no, they're fucking not. That's, that's a horrible reputation to give people. Yeah, I know some Irish that's just people. That's fucking stupid. It's funny as fuck, but, you know, when... The, yeah. When you live amongst people and you find out, well, we're all really all the fucking same. Every country I've been to, the core of it, it's all the same. Ninety, you know, not about ninety-five percent of your work is done by five percent of your workforce, just like every other place. It's the way it is. Oh well, yeah. It's a numbers game. Got nothing to do with what bit of dirt you were born on. And back to Graham Z after that little diatribe I just had. <laughs> Yeah, people are people, so why should it be? I could be right about this. You never know. I think you are. In any case, over here in the RLM, right here, right now, we got Bob Man, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, right up top. Closely followed. (laughs) Wow, (laughs) you got me choked up there. (laughs) Closely followed by, you know, when when the girl says deeper, deeper, that doesn't mean deeper, deeper. In any case. Lower, lower your voice, honey. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, we also got Grimner in the chitty chat as well as the lovely Moose Coil. And I missed the Freaker's Ball, so I'll have to catch a podcast. And I kind of sort of off and on heard Grim as he was popping back in and out, but it got to the point where I couldn't step away from the stove. So I'll have to listen to your podcast from last night later as well, Grimmy. So it's all connected. It was like interesting, a, too. He did a good job on that. Like a connect the dots and a, kind of thing. Real, he took on a really tough topic, but he made he made it. He only lasted almost the whole full hour, too. Sweet. Well, yeah. and there, uh, Darren Miller, is that his name? Over here on Fakey Book. Oh. Grim, you've got a devoted fan over here on Fake Book. Ooh, very good. He actually, yeah. he actually told me this morning, you got cool friends, Graham, listening to, Dar- to Grimner. And I thought, Sweet. So there you go, Grim. You're a cool friend, Grimmy. <laughs> I also see the lovely Miss Kate in the chitty chat. <laughs> I'm choked up again. As well as Anti and Anti with the Tail. Um, Frank Zappa's father, the notorious Edgewood uh, da, 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 MK Ultrasite. Oh, thanks, Frumpy Woik. In any case, uh, back to saying, hey, Asmo's here. Hey, Asmo, as well as Chloe and Psycholo. We also got a Chloe, a Tripoli Chloe. Tripoli, is, isn't that close to Africa, I think? I don't know. I don't know. Dayum Van don't Meter care. is also logged in. Dayum Van Meter. Dayum. Um, we got a flash somebody here as well. Hello, me. Hey. Oh, lucky well, us. 
Frumpy's trying to kid everybody into thinking he's working, but we know better, don't we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm here, Graham D, as well as JJ. No, 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 JJ. That's cautious fella. Yeah. And looky there, we got a Meister Bra in hey, the chat. Woody. Oh, it's Prince. I see it in print. It must be Prince. Rob Woikes. Rob? Um, huh. Rob. Oh, that's awesome, Grim. Cool beans. He said Daryl commented on the YouTube video as well. Yay! Yeah, a little uh, slap on the see. back there never that. hurt anyone. There's that bubbler. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> I see an SLC Mike is in the G chat as well as trust no one. <laughs> Whoops, I turned on that link. Sorry. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. The oof yeah. is in the chat. The lovely Miss Vanna White, the letter turner bot of the RLM channel, closely followed by Weather Dork, who's got a dork on for Miss Vanna. We got a phantom in the chat. Not a phantom. phantom. Oh, no, the phantom. The C- 66 is also here, as well as a Cyborgian Noodle. May you be Cyborgian Noodle today. Noodle. Or some such nonsense. Oh, I'm doing the Cyborg Noodle dance, well, at least with my arms. And huh. my kitty cat's on my lap, and she's looking like I'm going to pounce on one of them. So if you hear Uh-oh. a scream. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep. She's a good kitty. She, as yeah. soon as I'm done reading the names, I'll tell you why she's such a good kitty. In any case, we also got an E man and an N Siv. From B. From B. From B. As well as Kiss. Wow. Matt W J two thousand and two. Matt W J two thousand two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Zipix. Zipix. Now, I have to, before I forget, I oh, have to tell man. you why my kitty cat is such a good, her's a good kitty. Oh, her great out loud. No, her is a good kitty. Oh, kid. baby she's, talk, you know, too. She's a little mouser. And, you know, we mm. live out in the boonies we, where sometimes those little four-legged critters tend to come in and visit and say, hi, we're going to oh, eat yeah. something. Oh, yeah. Don't mind. Yeah. Well, she was staring between the wall and my pantry the other day, and I thought, what the hell is she staring at? <laughs> and then I saw my flip-flops were over there, and normally they're not right there, but that's where I kick them off. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, okay, it's something out of ordinary, so kind of moved along. Well, I'm sitting here watching um, Open Minds from the Gaia channel that I have through Amazon Prime, which, if nothing else, Gaia has a, a two-weeks free going right now so sign up for two weeks free of Gaia and seriously watch the show open minds from the first season to current holy crap this woman interviews some of the way coolest smartest out there people it's it's an amazing show so you know I try to stay awake for it but sometimes I nap through them but Oh, man, awesome show. In any case, I'm sitting there, and I'm watching this, and the farmer's sitting on the recliner couch with me, and we're just kind of – and then all of a sudden, my little female dog, Snuffles, (laughs) starts sniffing (laughs) behind the DVDs. And Rascal is also staring behind the DVDs. And then Snuffles tries to get between the DVDs and the TV, and it's like, what the hell's going on here? You're being invaded. So I went over and I picked up the little DVD rack and I moved it. Oh my God. I am so proud of myself that I did not do the first you say it, then you do it thing. Oh. There was a little snake. Oh, a snake. I was expecting a spider. Rolling TV stand. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I. I maintained my composure, at least in the physicality part of stepping back slowly, calmly, mm. putting down the DVD rack. Mm. Whole time I'm going, snake, snake, mm. there's a fucking snake. <laughs> to which Wayne goes, what? And he starts freaking out because he hates snakes. Oh, great. I mean, wow. Yeah. So he's going, oh, my God, no, not really. And he come over and he peeked around and he went, holy fuck, a snake. <laughs> wow. Okay. We haven't figured out how in the hell it got in the house. 
that he went, you know, he put, he's wearing shorts and a T-shirt, and he put on his high high uh, work boots. Well, he's, he's yeah. Mid cap. Yeah, I know what you mean. Boots. Yeah. Okay. So he's around in these work boots, shorts, yeah. and a T-shirt, mm. running out to the garage to get something that's got a long handle because he goes, where's your, where's your reach or grabber thing? Yeah, you just I get said, a, I don't have one. You get a My shovel and you just toss them. I don't them. have one. Well, and it was, it, we figured it was probably a little bull snake, but, you know, when he went to reach for it the first time and it started hissing, I went, it's a rattler! It's a, and I'm jumping up on the couch. <laughs> I'm sure... <laughs> If the NSA was watching through my camera that's closed down, but if they were still watching somehow, I'm sure they were laughing their asses off at us because, I mean, it, I wound up pulling the whole TV unit out so that he could get a little bit closer, and he took these long-handled plier thingies, and he grabbed it by the head, and it instantly wrapped all the way around it, so he's freaking out. And he goes, what do I do with it now? You take it outside and you let it go. Let it run away. Well, Good and God. that's what we did. I, I opened the door, yeah. and he started carrying it out. And he goes, now what do I do? And I said, take it across the street and let it go. Because it, it, there's lots of high grass over there, and it can go hide out over there. I Don't don't mm. release it in our yard. Wow. <laughs> but mm. he did. He And he threw pliers and all across the road. <laughs> wow. Anyway. So, okay. Yeah, we had a we had a snake in the house, and, yeah, and I then that. we went around the whole between the foundation and the house inspecting, trying to figure out how the hell did that so sub bitch get in. You went and all coronavirus over a little garden snake. Interesting. It was not a little garden snake. No. It was a. It was a little. It was a baby bull snake, but it. You know, the only reason I call it a baby bull snake is because I know what full-grown ones look like. Right. And so big. if it's a and baby, this one was taller. what's it going to do? It's going it, to be afraid of you. It's a snake. It was a, it was a <sighs> snake. Yeah. It was a snake well, in my house underneath my TV. It was no. You put your TV in the, right, in the snake's house and got in its way. Whether you accept that or not is not the snake's fault. It probably can't read. I am read. just proud that neither one of us either peed or shit ourselves. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. And I live with the city girl in the country, and you know what? What? I I wouldn't react. To, I don't have a problem with snakes. Unless they're bigger than me, then I'd be a little concerned. But a small, something I'm bigger than is is I'm a predator in their world, so I'm the monster to them. You're, well, you can't react in fear to something that's inferior or it will hurt you. That's the nature of life, dear. I see well, it differently than you, I know, but that yes, you voice is well. grew up on a farm where there was lots of rattlesnakes mm -hmm, and all that other mm -hmm. stuff. So he, he has a healthy respect for snakes, a.k.a. he does not like them. Okay, and I was given a boa as a gift when I was a teenager from a girl. So I raised it for a while before it escaped. <laughs> yeah, they're escape artists, and I tried to tell yes, her, don't are. don't handle my shit. I know how to keep this snake in here, and she didn't didn't put things back in it. Next thing I know, the damn thing's gone. But she was the one that got it. But it, it helped wow. me over, fear, overcome any real fear to have of these animals. There's just certain ones of them to avoid, and some of them are they're docile. It just depends on what they eat, how they survive. Well, now bull snakes do eat uh, mice and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. you know when when he when Wayne come back in, yeah. he said, "I still think I should have killed it." And I said, "No, oh, I should be thanking wow. it because I'll bet you it ate that mouse that Rascal's been trying See? to get that's hiding under the stove." Da, 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 da. So hmm. you know we, we need to thank it <laughs> and release yeah. it to the wild. Uh -huh. Thank you. I I appreciate that. I'm not a I'm not a good killer. I'll kill, well, but I don't really, I don't get the kick out of it that other people seem to enjoy. I don't either, but yeah, it's one of those, oof. Yeah, oof. but it's right down to a snake. I, the last animal I had to kill for some female was a snake, and I wasn't afraid of the damn snake. She was. Oh, I'm, blah, 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 blah. oh Christ, now i got to kill this poor thing? can it just, no, it'll come back. And I'll, What? It's a garden snake. I'm not going to do anything to you. But... People have their fears. 
You know what I called our show tonight, Miss Mary? What you, In a what perfect you call world, it? government brings the worst out of us. And I bring that up now because you started the show out with kind of a fun story about your cat and your, your mouse and your snake and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. But what's been on my mind most of the afternoon, because I should have stayed in town, but I decided to come home, checked out the chat, and uh, eh, I, was, I wasn't I wasn't prepared to see people so unhappy today, is what I think happened to me. Ah. Yeah, too much. Just everybody's exploding and mad at somebody and better than them and not as good as you and a lot of competition going on in the typing world today. So, <coughs> hmm. But I had planned on missing it. Because we had the show tonight, I was going to go into town, and but it looked like rain, and I fucked up and made the wrong choice. See, that's how or I explain was it shit. The right choice. No, it was. Yeah, I should have stayed in town. <laughs> well, yeah, hindsight. <laughs> exactly. That's oh, what I mean. Here is full that's, of hindsight. That's how I this works. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. That's how this works. Mm -hmm. It's like betting on the stock market, you know. Yeah, well, take, I don't do that. Take so. your winnings and run. Don't you know? Don't think you're gonna beat the house every fucking day, people. But eh. anyway, we we got ourselves a nice collapse going on, all around us in in ways that are way beyond financial, Miss Mary. I'm talking about what I see. It's pretty much a total breakdown of your society. It's gone. It's over. Finished. They're just still fighting amongst each themselves. They're not getting anywhere. So when a society is finished and all they do is fight, they're done. Yeah. Yeah. They're Pretty much. destroying their own freaking inner cities and burning shit and breaking windows and all this dramatic freaking climax to what? <laughs> to starvation. These people were fucking trapped in the city and then they had other people come from outside of the city and do these terrible fucking things and then the, it spreads it's like a virus the real how the real virus idea works is more mental than physical it's like wow look what they could get them to do just by smashing a few windows and throwing a molotov cocktail at some poor homeless guy yeah okay well yeah. Okay, well, people act like none of this ever fucking happened because all they're talking about all day is how much plumbers make and who's got a bigger dick than the other guy. And it got old. Yeah? It's like, fuck, enough. But I got to remember, I'm not living in that. So I don't, I forget, where does all the anger come from? Oh, yeah, they're living in the States. It didn't used to be that way. The States was the place to go where everything was fucking happening good. Everybody wanted to be here. I got Danish people telling me today, I don't want to go to America. <laughs> Went, wow. I don't blame them. Yeah, she's telling I don't want to go anywhere, but especially don't want to go to the States. And it's summertime here. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> okay. Because it rains like a, for about a month of the summertime, we get rain. And shit grows like crazy. It's like a jungle out there. So there's a, a good side to it. But the, being locked inside, cause dodging the raindrops and all that. I'm not good with rain for some reason. Uh, you hmm. know, and it's been kind of dreary. Actually, I see the sun is kind of sort of trying to peek out today. It, you know, it was It was supposed to be kind of nice out here today, according to the forecast. But, yeah. They read a script. They don't know what the hell's going on. They are all told to read a script. Yeah. And then they manufacture the weather that they want to have on the script. And occasionally they have a phone call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess. But I stay out of uh, it. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, one of the best things that ever happened was not ever returning home. I never would have thought that. You know, Oh, quit your bragging. It happened. Yeah. Well, it's hard not to. I got the biggest problem in my day was it could have rained, so I came home. Ah. Right. So, what? That, that's it? Yep. Next problem. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow it'll, it will rain again. <laughs> so, 
So I called that portion of tonight's In a Perfect World, It Rains Everywhere. Because <laughs> that's what, yeah. what fucking happens. Well, I guess, uh, you know, government brings the absolute worst out of us. And here we are in an election year with our every election year for many years going back. They've had their little pandemic crises, something every, yeah. every fucking time. Right. And every fucking time, it's always the public is so surprised by the results of what happened. <laughs> Except for Obama, because <clears throat> if you were dare to fucking say the word nigger when he was in the White House, people would just get all over you. And I know because I do it. I never cared. Give a fuck. It's a word. And let me tell you something else, people. Nigger covers a lot of white people I know, so don't get all uppity. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, I don't know. I don't really, I don't think I judge people by the color. I judge them by their word or their deed or both. Well, I do have to admit, I think I would probably judge someone if I met them and they were purple with green polka dots. Mm. Because I would be like, dude, what have you got? If it's not something contagious, how the hell did you get that? That's kind of cool. Does it fade? So <laughs> are you saying that you never use judgment, little missy? Is that what you're saying? Oh, huh? no. Huh? I, I use judgment all the time. Yeah. I make my own judgments. About what? Based upon my own perceptions. Hmm. Okay, let me ask you what's going wait. on around. Me. Okay, I got a specific question for you because this is there's okay. there is no opinion to have about the question I'm going to ask you. Okay, so for one, and the Grim will back this up because he did a show about it all uh, last night on uh, it's all connected. Okay? okay, all right. Now that question would be I got to make it so. Good. Okay, let me work, because you know how I am with, I ask it wrong in the first time, so let me work on this, and you, you go on another story, and I'll figure out the correct way to ask the, the oh, sure. question now I've got in mind. Oh, sure, now you want me to mind. squirrel, as if you think I squirrel well, on demand. Well, let's do some judging. No, we, we can sit in judgment while I'm figuring out. We can just, sit in judgment? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I will read this. My what? brother just shared this. What? Is it a link on, we can on all, the we, No, it's not real long. We can all learn no, an invaluable link. leadership lesson from this pack of wolves. The three in front are old and sick. They walk in front to set the pace. The next five are the strongest. They protect the front or the front side from attack. The middle group is fully protected, and the five behind are also among the strongest, and they protect the back side. The uh, last wolf is the leader, and he ensures no one is left behind. He keeps the pack tight and on the same path, and he's ready to run in any direction to protect his pack. So being a leader is not about being in front. It's about taking care of your team. Yeah, but that's a, so a meme. I, <clears throat> I thought there might be a link to it. They wouldn't, it wouldn't nope. stick in this RLM thing we use anyway. Tried it before, and it failed. So, but we can put links in here. That was good. I've seen that. Yeah. Well, and it. What? I mean, yeah, it makes total sense. You let the ones that can't move as fast set the pace for the rest of them. Hmm. And then, because I tell you what, when I try and walk with my daughters, because they both like to walk, and I like to walk as well, but number hmm. one, they've got longer legs than I do. <laughs> and number two, they're younger than me. Not that mm. age-wise really makes a difference, but they've got a little bit less wear and tear on their joints than I do. You just survived a head-on collision, <laughs> little missy. Don't don't forget that. This was a few I months know. ago. Okay. I don't get ahead of it. yourself. Well, you know, trying to keep up with them. I'm when judging they're walking. you, but I'm judging you. You're so. judging me. Yeah. You're so judgy. You're welcome. But. You know, sometimes I have to tell them, you know, you guys need to slow down just a wee bit because yeah. I just ain't up to that kind of pace. Wow. So. Well, that's kind of rude to have to be pushed into speaking of it that they didn't think of it for you. Because I was, I was raised the other way where you, you paid attention to the, uh, to, to your elders first. If they come to you, you're fucking it up and you're doing it wrong. So, oops. Well, yeah. yeah, and I know when I walk with my mom, hmm. I always walk just a step 
off to the side and just a little bit back so that that way if I need to step in and catch her, like if she loses her balance or yeah. something, it's not much for me to step up and do that. Mm. A lot of times if she falls, she does do the forward thing instead of the back. But yeah. I don't want my feet in the way of her shuffling. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I'm always off to the side and just a little mm. bit back. See, you know what? That's judgment. That's what judgment is for. But we take it into other places where it's opinion. It's not really... It's presented in a way that's not really true, so we'll be in, in this fucking anger at, you know, about stupid shit that doesn't fucking matter. It's really horrible. I watched it all afternoon. And I was in it, too, some of it. Just anger and, and people just pissed off and had enough. And and we've got each other to bitch at. See, that's... <laughs> instead of anybody going out into the real world and slapping somebody upside the fucking head... They got a chat room they can complain in. Ah, well, well that, yeah, and you know sometimes chat rooms that's where people go. Yeah, they go to well, just kind of vent from the day. And for the most part, if I've had a shitty day, I don't want to vent to anybody but mm. Wayne. Oh yeah. You know, and yeah. even then, yeah. I I rarely. Now the other day, yeah, mm. I kind of had a, a I had a bit of a pissy moment. Mm-hmm. And I did a little bit of whining and and oh, venting uh, and, but you know he was all good with it and he came up and he gave me a hug and he said I love you and that's what counted so it's like okay <laughs> I'm good now <sighs> right I have no idea what that meant in guy talk but okay it meant that I had something occur throughout the day that that burst my happy thoughts bubble. Wow, that's pretty hard to do. I try to do that, and you just slap me around, the weirdo. Yeah, well, you're not one of my kids, so. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not that close, Mary. I'm just a radio (laughs) friend. Give me a break. I'm not insane. I'm not Hansel, for fuck's sake. My imaginary imaginary chat friend. Even your imaginary chat friend doesn't get my dander up. I know. That's what I mean. I've known you long enough to know who does. It, It is hard to piss you off. I got to give you that. You have patience. <laughs> so, you know, I got told years and years ago, I was probably like hmm. 19, 20 years old, and I went to a palm reader. And she said, You're going to be a healer. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I can't stand the sight of blood. And she said, That doesn't mean you have to be a doctor. Hmm. Oh. You know what I want and to talk? I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> I want to talk to you about this particular topic, and it's going to slap you right in the face. So, you pick names out of that you want to deal with. I'm just going to bring okay. up the topic, right? And I've okay. still yet to figure out how to ask you this banking question in a way that you'll answer it exactly how I want you to. By the way, I asked the question. Oh, <sighs> that's what I'm working on. Okay, but this one. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, We've been uh, talking out their ass about what they fear, this mask thing. Okay, The people who are in fear, the, the worst of them, have nothing to fear except actually using the mask. But they've been conditioned or conned or something into believing the exact opposite of what we can prove is ab- absolute truth and fact through medical blah, 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 if they want to see it. But yet, they don't, they don't want to see that. They want to live in the lie of, oh, I'm wearing a mask, I'm, I'm so good, I'm wonderful, and you're a piece of shit because you're not. And that's what that's for. And nothing more, but some of them take it to a medical, oh, no, I'm doing this for my health. <laughs> hmm? Well, I, and I'm happy for them. If that's, that's what they truly think is healthy for them, then I'm happy for them. But as soon as they tell me that I have to for their health, then I have to, I, my standard response to them is, who died and made me God over your health? Who put me in control of your health? I thought I was in control of my own. I would you hope know, that, so, but I don't, it doesn't look that way. It seems to me, okay, that through... Again, one more fucking time with this government and politics and uh, mainstream media. These fucking thieves that that run all this shit have convinced the masses once again 
of something that is completely the opposite of the fucking truth. And they do it time after fucking time in every area that matters. Medicine, finance, housing, anything legal, anything that has a, something valuable connected to it that you can't live without, water. You know, <laughs> they just fuck with us constantly. And, and you know why they get away with that? No. Because it is such an exaggerated lie that people, you know, their bullshit meters have been so messed with mm. and so dumbed down that if something is an extreme lie like oh my god this little invisible virus is going to kill half the population and if not and, but but we can save the population by releasing the prisoners from jail because you know we can't leave them in jail because they might get the virus too <laughs> or or you know you have to wear your mask and keep your hands away from your face. And what's the, what's the first thing huh. the human monkey does huh. when you tell them not to do something? It does it. It, it does it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as, I was watching something the other day. <coughs> excuse me. I think it was a Dr. Bergman video. And he said, what's the first thing they tell you not to do? Not touch your face after you put your mask on? Do you realize that once you touch your, your face and you adjust your mask, you have contaminated your mask and you need to do a different mask? You realize, in order to follow their safety protocols, that's what you're supposed to do. And nobody, you know, and you see people pulling them down to where they've got them going, you know, they're like a three little pig saying, not by the mask of my chinny chin chin kind of thing. <laughs> no, I, I haven't seen a mask in probably two or three weeks. Well, if you look on the interwebs, they're everywhere, and most of them are just below the nose don't realize that you take in a lot of that shit through your nose, but they put them just below their nose or they have them on their chin or hanging from one ear. Oh, look, it's a fashion statement. Wow, that's a really cool earring there, dude. And you can, wow, you can use it as a burp thing or as a bib as well. Just tuck it underneath the chin, have a little bit sticking out. And that way when you dribble a little bit, it doesn't fall on your nice clothes. I like that. That's cool. But mm. the whole thing of putting it over your nose and your mouth and telling you, you must wear this. If you don't come into our establishment, we will, you know, don't wear one in our establishment. We will refuse you service. Well, <laughs> I will refuse to even come to you for service. How's that sound? How's that working out for you? You know, and everybody's bitching about businesses are going under. Well, the businesses are realizing, at least out here, they're realizing that, yeah, corporate says they have to put the sign up, but they're not going to enforce it. Now, there might be some little mask Nazis running around going, you must wear a mask. Why aren't you wearing a mask? The sign says. And every time I hear someone say, the sign says, hmm. that song, sign, signs everywhere, a sign that runs through my head. And I just start humming it and walking off because <laughs> it's like, y'all are crazy. If you're really that scared, why aren't you staying home? But I have to do things, so therefore you must do something about my fear. Uh, how? How am I supposed to know? Am I supposed to walk around and make sure nobody else has to deal with a spider? Because that's one of my fears. Or is everybody else supposed to follow me around and make sure I don't have to deal with spiders? I don't because, know. Because, you know, if you're going to say, stop being so selfish, yeah, I, I need an entourage to kill spiders for me. And to get snakes out of my house. So there. <laughs> but no, I don't demand such things. Uh, and I, well, I could don't you? expect anyone else. You know, <laughs> I don't mm. I don't expect to do such things for anyone else unless I'm visiting. And if I see a spider, mm. it's not one of those things where you go, oh, look, a spider, you go get it. It's like, oh, shit, I see a spider. Whap. Mm. <laughs> it's that simple. You know, deal with the issue right then and there. Murder. Not that hard. I'd be afraid I do of you. Spiders. Thanks. I, I do whap spiders because mm. they, they just are freaking creepy. Right. But, well, where we live, they, they serve a purpose and eat other things that are way worse. So let's let's leave nature do what nature do. You deal well, with I, nature how you like, but I do. Yeah. yeah. I don't kill shit. 
There are some that I have, you know, like if I have like a cardboard or something and I can scooch under and then throw it out the door, I do mm. that. Mm. But if I'm not close to a door, it gets squished. <laughs> yeah. you know, now, my little sister, the one just younger than me, she will pick it up with a Kleenex very mm. gently and she will take it outside and shake it out of the Kleenex. Da, 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 da. I'm yeah. not quite so zen. Well, you know, I was talking Saturday about something I wanted to bring up to you. And that mm-hmm. that was this topic. When I was, because me and you were about the same age, so we grew up relatively in the same time period at the uh-huh. same years, right? Uh-huh. And All right. And Saturday I was making a comment about how I feel this equality crap is really the problem to everything. It didn't save or help or in, it didn't improve anybody's life one bit. All, this, all it did is it made everybody equally shitty. <clears throat> Have you ever noticed that whenever someone says they're going out for equal rights, Mm. nobody, nobody really thought about it. Nobody really brought it up. Nobody really anything until someone stepped up and said, you don't have equal rights. Well, exactly. And then they went, oh, wait, give me that victim card. That's not what I'm talking about, though. You didn't let me finish the whole thing. I'm sorry. Well, Well, that's where my mind went. I know it did, but that's not where I was going. (laughs) I am me and you are you. So where I was going with it is I remember when I was growing up, girl would have a cigarette and you'd see the dashing guy, the fucking $30,000 gold lighter come, you know, jump in there and light light her smoke and take her home and bang her. Right? And and now. Where you lived. Okay. But you know what I mean. (laughs) Yeah. All right. All right, maybe I was a little exaggerated with it, but you know that was the that was the performance. It looked, you know, you did you, you dressed nice, and people were all tidy and shaved and clean, and their hair was all perfect. And we yeah, went, when you we went, went out, you dressed up to oh, go out. Okay, right, but back in those days, women were treated much better by men than they are today. And I say this because it was all because of that equal rights crap that some women didn't want it the way that it was delivered. Yeah. Some women liked having their freaking door opened or whatever polite gesture it was we were raised to do at the time. They beat that shit out of us in the 90s, maybe the 80s. I don't know. I was pretty high through the 80s. I missed a lot of that. (laughs) Well, anyway. it was just it was an act of being courteous. Right, and it's all gone. And now each now we're equal and everybody treats each other like shit. And what it it's it's like there's no identity any there's no gender identity anymore. Everybody just talks shit to each other like it's, you know, a locker room locker room crap. There's no there's no uh nice anymore. It's all gone. And I blame yeah. it on the equality because by by stopping a, a man from being kind to a woman because she's a female, he made they made us treat him like okay, well you get the door. What? <laughs> what? Well, see, You're I equal think the now. Problem is, what? I think the problem is people equate equal with same, and okay. they're not the same. Yeah. You know, there's there's people that say. Um, we want to have equal rights. Okay, I get the whole equal rights thing. You do know, you? if if I if I have a right to do something, then as far as I'm concerned, everybody has the same right. That's my personal definition of personal. equal rights. Personal. Okay. Per, you got to say personal. that. My personal. From reading the definition and all that uh, other fun stuff, that is my personal interpretation of what equal rights is. Uh, if I have a right, everyone has the same right. Oh. Oh, nice. But. Treating everyone the same is not treating everyone equally. And that, that <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a different That's kind right. of concept. You kiss but, your mama with that mouth. <laughs> yeah, I That's mean That's the whole point, right? Yeah, okay. I well, you know, in one sentence, I was just comparing well, okay, you know, everybody says we're all we all come here the same, which we do. We all come here naked and crying. That's how we show up in the world, naked and crying. 
not so much anymore because, you know, they're back with the natural childbirth thing. You start seeing this where they don't want the baby to cry. They lay baby on mama's tummy or chest and baby gets used to mommy's antibodies and understands don't attack these because these are good ones, that kind of stuff. But, you know, we all come out level playing field. It's what you do with that level playing field. And that's the difference between equal and same. You know, everybody gets equal footing to start with, but not everybody has the same results because everybody has different traits that they're better at than another hmm. or uh, maybe different physical no. things that, that make them to where they're not as able as someone else to, you know, like I can't run a hundred yard dash and whatever the speed is for that. I don't run. I can walk fast. But I do not run. That's right. I get I too many things fake. jiggling. But, you know, everybody gets, you know, they all get to start out on an equal footing. But they don't all get the same results because they all do something slightly different. So, yeah, we can all start hmm. on that start line. All right. But I was way on this other thing that I want to go back mm -hmm. to because it interests the shit out of me. And that's the, how that... I started out in, in life behaving towards females in one respect. And as I grew up, it changed. Now, it, don't even waste your freaking time. Yeah. And then, okay, and then something odd will happen. Like, I, I noticed this woman in the, uh, I was having my beer out in the, out in the walkway where they uh, do the shopping. And it was, like, quiet, so there wasn't hardly anybody around. I see this woman looking for a lighter. I just knew she had a cigarette. So I go offer her my lighter. And never said a word. Here's a lighter. She lit her cigarette. I turned around and walked away. Mm -hmm. Now, in the old days, but, I, of course, it was a little windy, so I, I don't think I would have tried to light it for her because of the wind. The correct way to yeah. was to offer the thing to her, let her do it herself, because it's windy. All right, well... What I'm supposed to do is ignore that she needs a fucking lighter. Let her get her own fucking lighter. What's who who? How is she special that I'm gonna walk all the way over there and give her something for no fucking reason? What's in it for me? And this is what I see that we've become as a collective. It's horrid, horrid to, yeah, the, to look onto. The mentality shift has definitely. Yeah. And I blame it on yeah, all this. Okay, the misdirection by the freaking government in the first place to ever raise a person up from child, you know, being a child to a grown man, and you learn that you're, you have rights that are what? Given to you? Protected? What the, who the fuck are they to give or protect anything that has anything to do with you if you don't want them to? But there's no opt out from the beginning. We're indoctrinated into this horse shit. And some people like me rebel. And I rebel. I still rebel. See, and that's that's what and I know I kinda went off a little bit on, on Twitter and yeah. and actually on a YouTube video as well. Yeah. I am so freaking tired of hearing it's anarchy in the street no it's fucking chaos <laughs> yeah. in the street yeah. they are two yeah. different words well anarchy does not by default mm. mean chaos it can yeah. if directed that direction but anarchy first and foremost and i tried to look it up again um mm. just to see because well, I knew what I was looking for when I did my little search, but I looked it up, and the first four things on DuckDuckGo hmm. showed anarchy as violence, chaos, destruction. Wow, that's not true. No, it's not. And then I found the WordPress that I had been looking for. It was like five or six down in my DuckDuckGo search, and it was an means without. Hmm. If you go back to the ancient Greek... And archi means rulers, so it means without rulers. Extrapolate that out. That means no external rulers, i.e., rule yourself. And sadly, there are entirely <laughs> too many people in this world because they have grown up with the whole idea of authority 
is going to make everything all right. And external authority <laughs> can decide for me instead of me deciding for me and living by the decisions that I make and the actions that stem from those decisions and dealing with the rewards or the repercussions thereof. Me. You know, and that's what anarchy truly is. Anarchy truly is yeah. no external rulers. Mm. So, you know, if you want to be a chaotic shit, fine, mm. be a chaotic shit. Just yeah. deal with the repercussions and don't start going, racist, you <laughs> smacked me down. No, you're a chaotic shit and you were busting my stuff. Wow. I smacked you down because you busted my stuff. Wait a minute. How did I get you in such a good mood asking about... I don't know, but it's... How... It, well... See, my thing is, I'm still, I'm still not clear on how your gender was manipulated into believing, for one, that men would uh, treating you the same would benefit you in any way. It's insane. You had it better off when, when men were nice to females. We had a better life. The life that I see, like Rob Work said, Hmm? it just takes one Karen to ruin it for the whole bunch. Why? Because seriously, it really only, well, it takes like three or four, actually. But it yeah. takes one Karen to step up and go, yeah. I don't want you doing that for me. I want you to treat me the same oh, as anyone that. else. Okay, see, Karen, I know who the fuck a Karen is. I'm in Denmark, Well, a, a, out loud. a Karen is a whiny ass. Well, yeah, you don't have Karens in Denmark. Oh, we, we, we have we sure, here. I'm sure we do, but I'm not, I'm not going to deal with any They're not that. in the mainstream media. <laughs> uh, but, I don't it's, know. you know, you take one. And, and, you know, she starts that and then someone, and then she starts talking to some of her girlfriends or whatever. You know how us girls chat. Mm-hmm. And they start saying, I just don't like a, when a man does this. That's what I mean and, is where did all that, see, I don't remember when I was growing up, difference between boys and girls was freaking obvious. But where, yeah. where did all this bullshit come in about, I'm better than you because you're a boy or a girl? That shit all seemed to come when I was a teenager, when I was like over, over deciding what I was going to do, like and 14, Aaron 15. Russo, maybe. Aaron Russo actually talks about that in one of his videos before mm. he died, mm. um, about the Rothschilds started the women's lib movement, mainly because they, number one, they knew it was a step towards breaking up the family. Plus, they could tax. Because once you get both parents out yeah. working, and it everybody. doubles the tax revenue. Yeah. And the tax revenue went to pay the debt at the Fed. At the time, when it was affordable. Or not the debt, but the interest on the yeah. debt at the Fed. When it was affordable, and now it's so fucking out. It's gone. You guys you guys are, it's finished. I don't know how can, how anybody can be in America and actually believe there's going to be an election in November. You'd be lucky if there's going to be 50 states in November to vote. Yeah, that's has, right, Grimmy. It is in his Freedom to Fascism but video. This shit hasn't even hit the fan yet. You know, so mm, uh, Well, see, and I think I think it has been. I think there is most definitely for several years, that's probably why things mm. are so shitty right now, is because it has been a splatter paint kind of thing. Depleting. Somebody right the time. somebody has got the Hershey squirts big time. Yeah. And so yeah. there it's hitting the fan mm. and it's spackling mm. everything. But it really is a very thin Hershey squirts. So it's so a lot of people aren't notice it. Now some Oh of yeah, us, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. Some of yeah. us have a little better yeah. olfactory and so yeah. we go, What's that smell? Yeah. Damn. Right. The minute you read it you know it's not true. You just know it. Yeah. We've been doing yeah. this a long time. Well, and you know what's the the Max <clears throat> Max Egan got kicked off of YouTube last week. I saw that. I was so disappointed. So you know a guy that that has that big of a following, we're just lucky we're flying way down here with our little numbers because we can keep talking as long as we don't get too fucking popular. <laughs> and I don't know if Same. Max went over I don't know if he's on BitChute or not, but yeah. Well, they they'll move they've him. Picked. Yeah, they'll they'll he'll pick it up. What what does it say? Max Egan is probably on Bitchute, Matt Moose Girl. I'm not sure. I didn't look, but I will. I haven't looked either. But hmm. and it was when I saw that it was uh, Robert from Observation Deck 
Yeah, but you know why they um, kicked him off, right? Because he was over the target. Well, no, he slapped him right in the face. He said that the uh, Australian government should all be tried for crimes against humanity. That what they're yeah. doing is absolute bullshit. At every level you can imagine using the word bullshit, he used it. And they got rid of him. Because why? If he's not telling the truth, why get rid of him? See? See, and that, that goes back to the whole, you know, when we had the truth. Oh, okay. Truth. It says he is on bit shoot. Okay. Um, you know, everybody was wanting to censor everybody, and you can't do this, and how dare you say that? And that's just, and I'm more of, I'm more of the mind that leave it out there. Let people see what they actually think. Let but, people see what they actually type, Mary, that's and not the let w- people base their judgments on uh, what they're putting out there, as opposed to censoring. We know because what you cens- want, but that's not what we have. Please. I know, but censoring does does nothing but but get people to want to find it more. You know, and it creates uh, not black always. markets, I, look, and it creates all kinds of other shit. Okay. Now it hmm. does it does confirm a lot of you know because I. I've posted so much stuff on Facebook that's got the faker, faker, belly acre moniker on it over on Facebook about, well, this has false, even though it came from the CDC or it came from the NIH or it, and it does the faker, faker, belly acre monitor. And then next thing you know, I go back a couple of days and it's gone. And it's like, whoa, well, censorship 101. Yeah. If you keep it out of someone's line of sight then they aren't going to know any better. But those that know about it, those that notice that something, hey, where'd that go? What the hell happened? That was just here. They will start looking even harder. Okay. Well, so I'm still on this other thing about how we compare each other through our gender and come up with the same wrong answer. <laughs> See, and I, I just... Hmm. Vive la différence. So guys have a gear shift and ball bearings. Uh, it's Girls not that, actually uh, have the place for things to fit. It's not so that, it's like, hey, bonus round. It's not that simple anymore. It's, no, it's nah, not. Nah. But I, I, I come from another planet where people didn't behave. I, the planet I'm living on at the moment is closer to the planet I came from than the one that I came from is now. Okay. So in other words, you found your home. In a sense, yeah, I make it, you know, I I contribute to this as much as I take, I think. So, yeah. But I don't try to make anybody American or any of that. I just share my good chewy Junis wherever I go. There you go. Yep. That's all I can do. What more? Well, that's really all anybody can do. It's just most people go, I want to do more. I want to make other people. <laughs> oh, see, that's yeah. Well, that's what right I was. After that. All right, that's where I was going with the mass thing in the first place. Was it's not about health; it's about some bully telling you what the fuck to do. Because I'll tell you this, and this is how you prove it: you take that motherfucker that wants you to put a strap on a fucking thing over your face, and you take them and you strap a thing on their face and you run them for five miles. I don't care if you drive and run them. I don't care if you run with them or ride a bike, but challenge them to five miles with that mask on. And when they get, if they can do a mile, I'd be amazed. Okay. Huh? Now, I know you said an awful lot about, you know, making them run and do a mile and all mm. that other fun stuff. But you as soon listening. as I heard you say strap on. Mm. <laughs> you weirdo. That's, be- that's because you were looking for a link. Wow. You well. Just- Right outside my head there, little Missy. What am I going to do? Well, to me, it's it really it's nothing more than a prophylactic. You know, and okay. how often uh, do prophylactics uh, work? Oh, wow. Not often enough. Yeah. Yes. My dad called me Houdini. He couldn't figure out how I got out of that thing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. No, I'm joking. I was a product of a planned childhood. In fact, this is the part that really fucked everything up, is I decided I wanted to become early, like seven months instead of nine. So, Ooh. yeah. So I wiggled my way the fuck out and went, hey, where's the party? But 
<laughs> I, I wasn't quite fully developed. Whatever I was going to be at nine months, I stopped all that shit and went, fuck it, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> ah. Yeah. And then, and yeah. then once you got out of there and you kind of looked around again, you went, wait a minute, I want back in. No, well, and no, And that's no, what no, men no. do. That took me a while. <laughs> but I don't even want to talk about that one on the radio. I've got a wife to think of now. <laughs> but, but rumor has it from my mom, though. She says that, oh. They had to put me in an incubator right out of out of the chute because I was so ah. little and yeah, it's puny, a very small child, and I didn't grow up to be a very big adult. I'm like a I'm like a big child as far as size goes. I might be like a big a ten year old, you know, because some twelve year olds are already six foot tall. Yeah. But a, a ten-year-old yeah. is still not quite developed completely. At a tall ten-year-old—that's about me. How, how big I am? Yeah, I have my my fourteen-year-old grandson is like almost six foot now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, and it's become more and more regular. When my brother was big, like that, tall. Well, is he's still around somewhere? I just don't know where he is. He's <laughs> he's blessing me with a little privacy. I hope for a for a moment. I get in these moods and just want the world to fuck off. You know what I mean, Miss Mary? Yeah, I do. Have you yeah, ever do. have you ever had the pleasure of sitting down with an arch enemy and telling them to fuck right off and enjoy their life and go your own way? No. Oh, I no, have. I have not. It's an incredible oh. feeling. It's both fearful because you know you're you're doing something that's really bad for two people, but it's the best choice out of the two, staying in the relationship or leaving it. So you leave it. Oh, well, when you put it like that, yeah, I have, because I am yeah. divorced. Yeah, so. well, that, I don't really, that's such a weird, marriages, I, I don't know. I'm in a marriage right now, so. Hmm. Well, I am too now. The D and, word. And this one is amazing. But. Yeah, but the D, well. People change. They change their minds and don't tell you. That's always a fun one. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. And it goes back to all this shit that's going through my mind goes back to when they split the genders apart in the 60s and pitted us against each other. They created the shit we have today. Oh, yeah. And had they left it alone because like the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, people were fairly decent to each other, sort of. To a, yeah. you know, to a degree, it wasn't as horrible. I mean, it's just fucking horrible now. <clears throat> I mean, I've been in places, I've been in lots of big cities in my life, right? And one uh -huh. of the, I'm going to share with you, my radio f fans out there in in a perfect world, I'm going to tell you a little story about when I was in London back in, I think it was uh, the first time I'd ever been to London, 1989. <clears throat> uh -huh. Okay, so I go there for a, couple of months, get away from America, go visit my parents and hang out and go to the bars and this, that, and the other. And one night I'm walking to the pub from the apartment I'm staying with, I'm staying at, and uh, I see this 10-year-old Muslim boy, maybe 12, right? And he's mm -hmm. walking about 20 feet ahead of the women that are behind him, and they're all females, and he's yelling over his shoulder at them like, oh, Wow. But that was obvious they were keeping that distance. They were walking that pace together. But he was mm -hmm. yelling at them over his shoulder. And I got this just a horrible, creepy feeling from experiencing it. Don't know why to this day. But because I saw that, I've always had a kind of a dislike for people that wear the Muslim garb in public. Well, it and that's I think a cultural. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm making a statement about a decision yeah. I made based on one event. But then again, I don't think anybody's ever really had a, a a good encounter with people that won't let go of their shit. And they move to somebody else's shit. Wait a minute, pal. You know, if I came here wearing a red flag suit, you know, a sport, red, white, and blue suit. Like a flag, people and demand that everybody start acting the way salute, you were used to. Yeah, salute me. I, I'm the flag. I just walked in your bar. Oh, hey, hey, where's my? You know, boom. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck down the road. But 
what we've been led to believe is the English-speaking cultures of the world, Canada, England, America, Australia, New Zealand, for example. Well, maybe not New Zealand so much. They're a little more wacky, but they're, uh, they're very um, subservient to this Muslim shit in the city. You know, fuck you and your fucking ass, pal. Woo. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll finish this off with, I went, okay, I went to the, uh, what do you call the boot market, the boot sale, the, what, uh, what do they call them in the States? Swap me, right? Oh. Where they're outside and all that. Well, it mm-hmm. had been raining and I'm with my mom and me and my mom are walking and we're walking towards this puddle. And we're trying to get around the puddle, so the guy walking towards us tries to, like, he's got a choice, and he chooses to get towards my mom in front of my mother. So I'm getting all doggy, barky, barky, and I'm stepping in front of my mother between my my mom and this rude fucker that's trying to walk into her. And she's grabbing me by the arm, and, hey, don't start with the Muslims around here. You don't need, you know, we don't need... (laughs) Okay, let's just go. But you know, and it was like, wait a minute, th- this is England. Don't start with that. It didn't start with anything. I was just protecting my mom from a rude guy walking, trying to walk into her. See, and that's that is someone that is having a control issue. Maybe I you don't know. know. Th- no, not you, yeah. not you. Right, him. right, right. But maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe he couldn't and see. Maybe he was blind. <laughs> don't. Uh, you know, making ex- <laughs> making excuses for rude behavior is just excuses. I know. But but I'm rude. Sometimes. You know, and see, you were reading his body language because you were you could tell hmm. this guy was going. You know, he was attempting to do some kind of control freak. Um, hmm. I am better than you. Get out of my way, infidel. Whether that's Maybe. actually what he was doing or not, the body language was reading that way. That was and enough, so yeah. you stepped up. Hmm. You stepped up to defend your mom, yeah. a, i.e., protect your mom. And she's defending him against me, and I'm this little tiny guy that just doesn't want my mom being pushed into into you know at a boot when there's room to walk around. You don't have to go well, out of your way to walk in front of somebody. He could have just kept going straight, but he didn't. He <laughs> it was and, uh, <clears throat> to me people that do that, they that step into that control freak. I've got to control everybody else thing. It's because they really have very little self worth. Or is it that like the modern day man today does have any fucking respect for the female gender at all? It's deplorable. I see grown men come into the RLM, singular, and Mm -hmm. just bash an entire gender because he's not one of them. And it's like, wait a minute, wow, where where the fuck? Or bash an entire gender because they've been shit on by one from that gender. And that's that's the sad thing about the stereotyping. Uh I mean, if I wanted to, I could think everybody was a fucking drunk, drunk, drug-addled, selfish little prick. But I don't. I happen to enjoy men. And I know that all men are not drug addled selfish little pricks. Huh. And so uh, Yeah, but see that's the if you if you watch like MSM or movies or anything like that, all that media shit, internet, it all seems to have made the guy a big dumb fuck. And and the women of the world are gonna save us. And here we are. We and here we are, still drowning in the same shit we've always been in. It doesn't change. Nothing gets better. It just gets worse. Well, and that that was the whole intent. It was to number one, you know, hmm. they say empower women, hmm. but no, mm-hmm. it really didn't empower women. No. What it did was beat down the masculine, and you really need to have a balance of masculine and feminine. I'm getting all existential on you here, but, you know, women can do things that men can't do. That is a biological fact in this 3D reality that we are living in right now. Women can do things that men can't do. That's right. Men can do things that women can't do. That's right. Enjoy the difference. Learn to work together instead of going, well, 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 no, no. 
enjoy the difference. We are made different for a reason, and we're supposed to learn to learn to cooperate instead of competing. And somehow or another, that cooperation got booted off to the side, and competition got kicked in because competition is ever so much better. You'll get farther ahead if you compete as opposed to working together and everybody <clears throat> benefiting. Damn, Mary. I know. There I go being all communist again. No. Too, so going to name a country after you. There you go. But it's just, it, it makes me nuts sometimes to yeah, see this stuff. Yeah, and yeah. and I remember, yeah. you know, being younger before I got married the first time and, and say, going out on a date. And, and I knew what the intent was. I, I was not blind. I knew how to read body language. And it was one of those, hey, let's go out and I'll take you out to supper and we'll go to a movie and then... And it was the and then that I went, yeah, right. Mm. No, I'll pay for my own supper. Thank you very little. Mm. And I'll pay my own way into the movie. Mm. That way I am not beholden. Well, because see, that's that, the I, old I, way, no. though. Yeah, that's that's the old guy way. But, Wine them you know, and dine them, baby. Do all that yeah. suave and deboner shit. Get you some. Yeah. Yeah, or see if you can get some. And that was the other thing that really made me crazy. Hmm. You know, especially in high school, all these boys were walking around this hot stuff. Look at me, I'm a stud, I'm on the football team, I'm a track star, whatever, whatever. And yet, you know, all of these women that they or girls that they supposedly got some from yeah. she was a slut. What the hell was he? A stud. Huh. What the fuck? Huh. How did that work out? She's. You wouldn't be a stud if you if you wouldn't. Uh, so all of a sudden, she's no longer has any value in your eyes because she put out. You no longer have any value in my eyes because you just called her a slut. So there you go, <laughs> Mister Stud. Wow, how do you like even get? How do you get into situations like that? You little trollop. My well, I grew up in a Catholic Protestant community. Oh, and that'll I tell do it. You what, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. The men folk, they were supposed to be players and they were supposed to try and they were supposed to get, you know, get some. Hmm. But the girls that gave them some because they thought he loves me because the boys were really good at saying that shit. Hmm. And, you know, they're they're really good at Oh, baby, if you loved me, you would. And I tell you what, I had that little <laughs> chit-chat with my granddaughter because she had told me that one of her boyfriends <laughs> okay. said, you know, if you loved me, you oh, would. And no. I said, you know what, if he loved you, he wouldn't be forcing it on you. And she just looked at me and I said, if he truly loved you and truly respected you, he wouldn't be pushing that shit. Well, how come it, her mom isn't teaching her this shit? Because she didn't feel comfortable talking to her mom. I wait, wait a minute. Okay, well, never mind. And I, I understand that. I didn't feel comfortable talking to my mom about some things. Mm. You know, you need to have someone else you can talk to. Mm. And me being me, <laughs> I brought it up. So, oh, do you yeah. have a boyfriend? So, has he tried to push himself on you? Oh, oh really? That's what he said. <laughs> well. Wow, bait the trap. Baby, you're just a natural <laughs> born hunter. Well, and, you know, it's, mm. it's just, it's one of those double standards that I really, and it's been going on for quite some time. I understand that. You know, men are the, men are the champions. They're the ones that, that overtake, you know, they, they get this and they, they get the conquest. Mm. And now she's just used goods. Mm. Seriously? Dude. Dude. Uh, mm. Wow. Yeah. Now you're Woody? Okay. Well, yeah. You have yeah, so many yeah. faces on the radio today. Yes, I do. But it, uh, it just, it always frustrated me that men are supposed mm. to be stud muffins when they do mm. that shit. Oh. How in the hell do you acquire stud muffinship if you don't have someone to, for you to practice your studliness on? Let me go ask my wife. There you go. Because I mean, it takes two. Who are you asking a question like that of there, you weirdo? 
It was a rhetorical uh, question we, because no. I know there is no real answer to it. There's no, we don't do rhetorical. But, but, it's but, a perfect world. No, let's let's have something with some substance to it. Like there is no fucking thing such as a right given to you by another living being. It's a bunch of shit. No, there are no rights given to you by another living being. But people choose right. to believe that. What? Can I? Minute, can I finish a sentence? Wow. Mm. Slapping okay, me I'm around gonna... tonight really bad here. <laughs> so, okay, well, I think all these things are actually a matter of a decision you make in your mind to shut yourself up so you don't even get into conversations like that in the first place with total strangers. You know. I never have to to strive to set a boundary in a public situation. I just behave in a certain fashion. And I get exactly what I want depending on what I do. See, and that's, that's me. I behave the way I wish to be treated. I, now, in the chat room, that's another story, I think. I don't know how to define the chat room is so much different than physical. I think we just take liberties in the chat room. We would never do in personal nose-to-nose. Because I, I know how I talk to people, and we don't agree on see everything eye-to-eye. Eye. But we're mm-hmm. cordial, and we're friendly, and when I come in, it's, hey, how are you? And how are you back? And all that. So there's no never any uh, friendship lost over the opinion Regarding a political issue or, fuck, I don't know, who owns the color blue? You know, because we all think what we think. Yet, I own purple, okay. just so you know. Now, but when we go into a chat room, the dynamic shifts somehow. And things that will irritate me in a chat room, don't. I would never listen to it in public. I just won't get up and leave. Yeah. See, and that's that's one of those things where the Internet has been an absolutely amazing and wonderful thing yeah. on one side. Yeah. And on another side, it has been the bane of everybody's existence. Hmm. And, you know, because you, you have so much information at your fingertips until you have to deal with the algorithms. But there's ways around that shit as well. And you have to just not be so lazy and just look at the first five that they give you. You have to tell it, no, that's not enough. That's not, I'm wanting more. Give me more. You know, or actually yeah. dig stuff up. So the Internet is amazing for that because there, there's oh, information right, but, available at your fingertips. But right now we're in the but, midst of a shit storm from all yeah. sides of life, right? So, And see, what you're seeing going on right now in the yeah. rioting, the way I – the way I'm seeing it, That's at least, one of them. Is, yeah. is you've got all of these people that have been grown up, basically, with being keyboard commandos. Oh, I can yeah. say whatever I want. I can be as obnoxious as I want. I'm going to get, what are you going to do? Smack me through the screen? Wow. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah, yeah. And do all this yeah. shit. Yeah. And then they get out in public and they think, I'm in a crowd of keyboard commandos. I can do whatever I damn well please. <laughs> what are you going to do? Smack me, punk. Oh, shit, that hurt. What the fuck, man? That wasn't very nice. Uh, wow, are you having fun? Baby. Wow. You know, and I think that's what's going on right now is all of these lovely little keyboard commandos that grew up, I know, because I can type it in the computer. Oh, blah, 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 I'm so wonderful. Uh, and then uh, they get out in a face-to-face interaction, uh, and they find out that, you know what, when someone says, fuck you and the horse you rode in on on the computer and you meet them in person, uh, or at least someone that's like a surrogate for them, and you start your shit, and they just kind of basically up close and personal when you say fuck you and the horse you rode in on and smack you down. Yeah. All of a sudden, keyboard commandoing is looking pretty damn good. Well, yeah, but did you ever notice that the politicians look like supervillains out of cartoon books? They do. Oh, my God. Have you seen Shrek, the little guy from the very first Shrek the well, prince, whatever his name was, uh, that was supposed to marry Fiona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it? That's what Robert Mueller looks like. <laughs> I shit you not. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. And he's short, too. Uh, man, when I found so out how he was, hey. it was like, oh, that's the guy from Shrek. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. 
Lord Farquaad. <laughs> oh, Lord Farquaad. There you go. Some Thank of you. you will die, but it is <laughs> it is a sacrifice I will have to make. Oh, yeah. Oh, these people. Yeah, well, you know, we realize there are adverse reactions to some of these things, but we find the numbers acceptable. We can deal with them. Really? How about that you get included in those numbers? Are they as acceptable now? How about one of your children gets included wow. in Is it still acceptable now? Wow. You're just on a tear tonight, aren't you? I am. Got, I'm, I'm a rich I, norm I tonight. Managed to, well, I still haven't managed to figure out how to ask this question, so you can't not answer it the way. <laughs> well, it, if it can be done, I'll figure it out. I'll tell you that. And I'll work on it until I do. <clears throat> I've got uh-huh. the idea. Oh, uh, well. You'll probably be back to do another radio podcast with me if I don't yeah. figure it out today. I'm actually, you know, I, what? Yeah, I listened to this gal that is like a, a uh, world-renowned economist hmm. on um, that Open Minds show on Gaia. Hmm. And, I mean, she's really a very smart lady. She doesn't interview really well, and she, whatever, she has physical traits like eyes darting around that throw me off but whatever but she's really a smart lady and and she started talking about the federal reserve and how it is owned by a conglomeration or a group of individuals and each federal reserve is owned by individuals it's not owned by the government right right right. and and she said everybody keeps going well, the debt is so high. The debt is so high. Well, she said, number one, they're just printing it out of nothing. Mm. A lot of people don't understand this. They're just printing it out of nothing. She said, really, the only problem that the United States has is the interest on the debt. And one thing she pointed out, somebody had brought up something about their, and back in the early 80s. God, I'm going to have to watch it again now. About um, they were going to nationalize the Fed. And it was a senator that was doing this bill, and he had several other backers. And she said the Federal Reserve got really freaked out about that because they thought, oh, shit, there goes our money stream. Because he said, hey, you know, if we're going to be printing money right and left, then we may as well be borrowing from ourselves as opposed to. And so um, what they did was the Fed came up with a compromise with him so that he wouldn't push forth this legislation that was really starting to gain some traction and what they did was all of the the interest or all of the uh, tax revenue that's generated or that's brought in that basically goes to pay the interest on the debt yes those of us that know some of this stuff actually understand that concept it doesn't yeah, go to pay right. for anything the government does it's on the interest, interest on the only, debt yeah but Seeing as how they have been taking in more tax revenue than what the interest on the debt is, the Federal Reserve made the compromise that we will just turn over all of the excess back to the government so you guys don't nationalize us. And that was the compromise they did. I think it's like 82 or 83. In order to keep this from going to the point where it would be a piece, actual piece of legislation, they decided, nope, nope, we will take the interest to pay off what the interest is right now, and anything that's over and above, we'll just give that right back to you. So I thought, wow, the shenanigans that they pull. Hmm. You, know you know what I call this that? whole creating money out of nothing. Right. But I even give it a name. Oh, yeah? Yep. Well, it's fiat currency. Well, but... Oh, not that name. That's already given oh. that. I gave it a different name. What's that? Too big to fa- too big to function. <laughs> yes. See, and that's what I think happens is things grow too big, and after a certain point, you can't manage it anymore. All you have is just a bed of thieves and victims. And that's what it's yep. turned into, and that's what it looks like to me. So, hmm, maybe I'm wrong. And yet, I don't know, but it doesn't and, look and good. And, you know, I think a lot of the reason why people – are identifying with the victim thing is because the government has become so big and so in your face, at least from what we read. Now, quite frankly, they're not in my face out here in the middle of the boonies. Yeah. 
I have very little interaction with anything governmental. Mm-hmm. But people, the concept that people have bought into, literally bought into, is that the government is so big, the debt is so big, there is nothing that I can do. And yet all they have to do is realize that they start taking a little bit of their ownership back, just a little bit back at mm-hmm. a time. Yeah. You know, you don't have to get right up in their face and say, fuck you, because a lot of times that puts a big old honk and target on your back. Yep. But if you just kind of a little bit at a time and just start ignoring some of these royal edicts that come down from on high and just a little at a time, back and away, and if you get enough people that start seeing how well that works to just a little bit at a time, mm. back away, mm. or... You know, to start playing their own game, because I don't think it's an either-or kind of thing where you can only do the backing away. You have to also play their game to a point and start throwing their rules right back in their face and saying, oh, you want to do that? Well, guess what? Two can play that game. This, 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 and this. And then they have to actually out in public go, oh, well, this won't work, which has a tendency to wake more people up. So sometimes they will acquiesce on things Ah. just so they can keep it out of the mainstream news, out of the vibration, collective vibration, and then people won't catch on to, wait a minute, that bunch over there, they stood up and they actually changed shit, and now they don't have to. Now there are those, there's the Gladys Kravitzes of the world that will go, I see what you're doing over there, and damn it, that's not fair. You don't have to pay taxes on. They should have to pay. Those people need to be smacked. Why? Just once. What about freedom of speech? Well, you know, you can. You're free to say whatever you want, and you're also free to deal with the repercussions of whatever you said. And if you start saying, I need to start towing more of the line because I'm not towing as much as you are, it's like I'm not even involved in the line. Hansel says that every time he comes into the RLM. Come on. I know he does. And, you know, if it comforts him to think that way, then go right ahead and Ah, think that way. The poor guy was sniveling about welfare recipients and all all this stupid shit. You got senators that are making pensions for their fucking lifetime. Not only imagine they sit in these fucking seats for 30 fucking years, milk the system, do... uh, from what I understand, they have pretty much set it up now to where one term and you get lifetime See, retirement. It's just probably. fucked up. And, and But then they sit there for, like Pelosi, 30 fucking years, doing fucking nothing. Yeah. San Francisco's a shithole. Yeah, I thought it was a shithole when I went back there in 2003 for a, like a day. I couldn't stand it. I went, oh, fuck this. And that was a great place, and I lived there in the 80s. <laughs> but, man, when I went back for a reunion in 2003, it was like, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, and that was, wow. And it wasn't as bad as it, it's what I've seen on the Internet, anyway. But when I was physically there, it was already going to shit. I just, nah, I didn't like it. Wee. But I was spoiled by the 80s big time. I got to see a a lot of big cities before they finally fell to shit. L.A., Miami, New York, you know, San Francisco. Anyway. San Francisco. Uh, I was a great place to live in the 80s. I had a blast there. But I wouldn't live there today. Oof. Well, I've been to California once, See? and that was enough. <laughs> I was born and raised there, and the shit I did in the first 20 years of my life, it doesn't sound like the same state. I, I really don't think it is. No, I was hitchhiking on the 101, the, high, the Coast Highway 5. <laughs> Up and down the coast, up and down five, go to Canada, come back. Anyway. I've I've never been to Canada. I always thought it would be fun to drive up there. Well, I made it to Montreal in a fluke. Oh, I take that back. Yeah. 
I was in Toronto for about three hours on a layover. Uh, it's not the same, <laughs> you bonehead. On the way to uh, the UK. Yeah. How many but, people have ever done that? Oh, yeah, I've been to France. Yeah, the French airport. <laughs> yeah, Charles de Gaulle. Come yeah, on, stinky on, damn place on the, ever. Yeah, but the, you know, a layover from some place to some place is not being somewhere. <laughs> i tell you what. Uh, Right. If the Tell rest of what. France was anything remotely close to Charles de Gaulle Airport, yeah. that little layover was all I needed. Hmm. So speaking of too big to function, because you went way, way out in left field on that one. <laughs> hmm. You know, I brought up something else on Saturday on my show, my dork table solo, right? And I, uh -huh. ended, I ended that show. I want to end it with this. We might be able to squeeze a half hour out of this idea. I think I've got a limited understanding of myself. Hmm. Now, a limited understanding of myself. Not talking about you yet, you big old ego. No, maniac. I'm just back up limited, a little bit. Not unlimited. No, limited. limited. Yeah, it's just okay. very, it's very limited. I'm not aware of all of the senses I have at my disposal. Larry Woods taught me this. Okay, because. I asked him about, well, how do I control my own vibration? And he answered me with, you decide you do it. You make up your mind. There you go. That's doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if we were, like, actually sat down and schooled in a proper fashion where we could understand these things in a simple way and make them work for us, <clears throat> I think the collective would get along better. Oh, Yeah. But it's such a weirdo topic. Oh, okay, remember uh, the Charlie Manson case, and they had that movie, some TV movie about him. And one of the big scenes is, uh, is Mr. Manson vibrating? You know, because well, I I didn't dig his vibes. They talked all cool and slick, uh -huh. because they were trying to ma you know, to push that whole vibration concept, put, get make a fucking mo mockery out of it. So yes. so that Joe Public will never take that seriously and go, hey, wait a minute, there may be something to this vibration stuff. I wonder what it mm -hmm. is. No. Oh, yeah. What they got us doing is arguing about what fucking flag should be burnt on a video game, you know? Now, you know what I mean? Oh, Something yeah. stupid. Immaterial crap that doesn't change fuck all. But they've got the public, oh, look at the damage these video games are doing, blah, 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 blah. It's not the yeah, game. Yeah, get all dismissive with the real stuff. Yeah, see, and, it's not yeah. it's not the game they're playing. It's the equipment they're using that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Because we're getting our electricity on a shitty frequency, a shitty vibration, a shitty delivery system. The whole thing is rigged to fuck us up. But when you try to tell people about it, they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah. but but they'll go. What? It's two fifteen. I have to take my so and so pill. What? Are you out of your yeah. fucking minds? And I tell them, Hey, come on, Rockefeller Medicine. Haven't you read a book? Do you not know what food is for? <laughs> and actually, I didn't realize it until listening to some of these videos um, that. What is called Rockefeller Medicine was actually started in like 1840s. So it was started before Rockefeller got involved. He's the one that put it on steroids. And that's not that, me on the harmonica. That's her phone. No, that is. Oh, and it's my mother calling. Mm. And yeah. I don't know why she's calling. Okay. Do you want to take the call? I will. No. Nah. Okay. I'll call her back here in a little bit. Well, we could always argue about Grimm's opinions. Uh, I don't want to argue about Grimm's opinions. I, For the most part, I kind of sort of agree with Grimm's opinions. Why? Because I like Grimm. And I Whoa. like Grimm because I like his opinions. Whoa. And I like his opinions because, you know, it's one of them circular kind of things. No, not really. I'm just teasing you. I'm giving I, you a hard time because you're a... Uh, your phone was ringing. It made me think about, wow, wait a minute. I'm going to get accused of playing the harmonica again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my phone. And actually, we went down and, and got some stuff fixed on it um, while we were down visiting my mom. And uh, the guy that was fixing it goes, you have got the coolest ringtones. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, you do. You've got good taste in uh, cartoon. You know, oh, yeah. Some people well, don't. Well, you know, life they is don't. silly. Life is right. life is supposed to be fun and silly. But there's so. there's good art, in my opinion, as an artist. There's good, okay. well, tight, nice art. And then there's shitty crap. And yeah. some of the shitty crap, I appreciate it because of the uh, stories they told using it. Like this, uh, what was it, South Park. Shitty fucking artwork. But the comedy was priceless. Yeah. So. Well, and it's to me that's one of those things where you get hmm. if you're trying to put something out there because actually they they did put out some pretty valid stuff. Yeah. But if you do it in such a a shitty art form, if you will, um, then they don't notice it so much. Well, I don't know about that. They 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 were pretty upfront with their insults to everybody. I, I yes, they were. But you know what? A lot of up. a lot of kids formed their opinions on what they heard from South Park. I have no idea. Maybe maybe they did. Uh, I'm just I have using it as a nephews that, okay. that. Yeah. I don't. If I do, South Park didn't come up when I talked to them. <laughs> yeah. So wow, I picked a bad topic. Mm. No, that no, you didn't. But that's you know that, and I understand the the artisticness of it is not. Well, they boasted you know, about it was shitty artwork. They they purposely they uh-huh. sold shitty artwork by having good stories and jokes to tell, and good uh-huh. good adult humor right there. But the artwork was just. But I would have never. Have it, well, I would have never if got. You have a top notch primo everything. Then those leeches that be have no, a tendency to bullshit, Mary. If you're related to the mm-hmm. right people through marriage or blood, then you can do the undoable. And if you go through and you look at all these fucking self-made people through the last fifty, sixty years, and you find out who they're related to, you find out you got lied to. They didn't build anything. They were handed shit on a silver platter. Oh yeah. Well, oh, and you know, The Simpsons. The Simpsons is the one that gets me. Cause I never really watched The Simpsons. I yeah. thought it was a stupid cartoon. True. But seeing stuff, you know, now yeah. and yeah. seeing that these Simpson cartoons were put out years ago. Yeah. And they're yeah. they're doing things that are going on now. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> Which is pretty much why I go, it's all a script. <laughs> it's a very shitty script. Is it? It is most definitely a B movie, if um, anything. Yeah. But this is your reality TV for you. People love this shit, Mary. I spent the whole oh, yeah. afternoon reading the chat room and how much fun everybody's having living their daily life in you know, my ex home and it's just heartwarming. And I get so homesick reading that I <laughs> I have to go find something else to do because I I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> no, that's a bunch of bullshit. But uh I'd sure like to say that and mean it, but I don't. But uh Well I think I would I, I couldn't really expect it because the reality of life right now, we're in this ball of shit. From the outside forces in. And we're being inundated from shit. It's horrible. Yeah. Well, then you put a room full of us together and there you go. And some of us have shit repellent in our DNA. Like yourself. Like Grimner. Like me. Mm. Now, some people's shit, I let it stick on me for some reason. Other people's shit, I just repel it. Ooh, that was fun. Well, There's, and that's that whole energy kind of thing and frequency, and they're positive and negative, whatever, electrons and photons and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I wonder what I expect out of people, because I obviously don't get much of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, of course, then I don't think I, I'm obligated to do anything either, so... Hmm. Well, you know, nobody is really obligated to do anything, you know, except for they're obligated to themselves. Mm. Because, you know, if you don't want to have shit thrown at you, then you don't throw shit at other people. 
but it, it you know, that's takes. kind of a that's a self obligation kind of thing. If you don't want it happening to you, then don't do it to ah. someone else. That's the obligation you make to yourself. Ah. It ta- it's more it takes more energy to be a prick than it does to be not be a prick. Being a prick well, is that's... hard work. And all the one liners and the thinking and whew, boy, it gets gets heavy. <laughs> yeah. Well, but being nice, that that doesn't take shit. It's kind no. of a yeah cheap way out if you think about it, but let's do it the hard way and think of the one liner that goes for the nuts instead. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. I want I want to see you squeal. Well, yeah. I'm going to blame it on that. I don't have a complete understanding of myself enough to appreciate the dick in somebody else. And, you know, I remember seeing a meme not too long ago. What? If it bothers you, it's meant for you. When it no longer bothers you, you have learned the lesson, and now you can move on. Yeah, but, see, what about something that's written? That's a hard thing to really narrow it down. What is it about what that is that bothered me? See, nah, my life is not as black and white as I guess as I like it to be. There are those moments where words escape me, Miss Mary, and wonder what's really going on behind what you just said. And, wow. Well, and I have those moments as well. And I, you know, a lot of times I'm getting much better at learning to, wow, that really put a knot in my knickers. Why in the hell did I let that put a knot in my knickers? Okay, number one, let's get that knot out because I want to be able to sit comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then let's address why I allowed that to form in the first place. And once, you know, I really am getting much better at it. And I keep having people tell me, you overthink everything. Well, I might. I might. I'll give you that. I know there are times when I I do overthink things. Oh, yeah. Fuck. But, Who does you it? know, a lot of times it's like, why did I let that get to me? Hmm. Especially who it came from. Why am I letting that get in my craw? The distraction. Oh, yeah. it. It's the yeah, distraction it from the the moment you're in to the future or the past. That, the, that this system is geared up to create for us to, to live in whether we want to or not. Well, and I think, you know, unless you're like a Swami guru somewhere and is very good at telling people, oh, I never let things bother me like that. I just let it flow. Yeah, right. Okay. If you can do that, good on you. But I don't know too many people that can. Oh, I can do it in real physical life. It depends. You know, there's some things that I can just let, just, just, you know, let it go. Let it go. But there are some times where it'll catch you. Well, and you I, just and I, I don't know if that's because you've had you've let so many go and mm-hmm. then you finally just go, Okay, stop sign. This one, this one's stopping oh. right here and we're gonna deal with this shit. Because oh. 'Cause you've been letting it go and letting it go and letting it go and now and you know, it's it's kinda like mm-hmm. a toddler. You let them get away with naughty stuff. Oh, do you? And you let them get away and you let them get no. away and you let them get away and then all of a sudden it's like, Okay, right now, here Right here. You ain't no. doing that crap anymore. Oh, this is the way I'm seeing it. <gasps> I've, the little toddler in me has let things go and let things go, or I've allowed oh, the little toddler to let things okay. go. And and then all of a sudden, that little, little toddler stands up and goes, but I want to. That's not nice. I'm going to kick you in the brain cell. And then I have to sit down and I have to address it. Hmm. And, you know, once I get it address it whatever it is that has gotten in my craw once i get it addressed usually it doesn't bother me again but man there's there's been a few things especially of late that damn mercury and retrograde shit um <laughs> there's been things lately oh, that have really go. stuck in my craw and it's like ah man i gotta get that shit out i gotta change the locks on my brain because i i don't want that living there anymore Oh, so see that's what I mean about it. it's just a decision. You just change your mind. It's not it's not impossible. It just depends on how serious the thing is that you're talking about that you take it. And some things in life that others feel are so hugely important to me are just a butt of a joke. Like the difference between, say, Trump and Biden or 
the difference between a Democrat and a Republican. There isn't any. They're both equally responsible for the shithole we are in now as a collective. These fucking I think Lewis voters. Black has the best definition for the difference between a Republican and a Democrat. He's a it's Jew. A bowl of sh- well, it's a bowl of shit looking in the mirror at itself. Yeah, he's a Jew. Laughing a good laugh yeah, at yeah. Whitey. Yeah, don't uh, don't be... Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's he's putting it out there, and too many people thought, oh, that's funny, but they didn't realize... He's telling the truth. You always it's a say bowl that. Of shit, you, looking in the mirror at itself. You said that about Carlin too. I I never thought they were trying to be funny. I thought they were telling us something, and people are just too ignorant to be told anything. So you got to make it sound like a joke to get away with telling it. And still, ninety five percent of them don't even get it. Stupid. Yeah. Just brain dead. They can see the debt, but they can't see the cause of the fucking debt. They don't understand. There is no value to the money. It's just make-believe. We just believe it, so there it is. And that is... Wait a minute. And that is going to run its course and die. And when it it does... This is what all the hoarding is about, right? The people that are hoarding food and silver and whatever have you, preparing for the end of the fucking world. Well, the government is going to do this as slowly as fucking possible, And what they're going to try to do is convert it over to a digital currency and give everybody a fucking card. Because the money isn't the issue. The issue is the control of the money. Yes. Right? Now, as soon as they got us all in a card to eat, to live, whatever, you can't do it without the card. That's what they're after. Not anything else. And we can talk COVID and riots and all these fucking bullshit stories and, and, and... events that they create on purpose to get where we are now. This is supposed to collapse and crash. Well, it's a Hegelian dialectic. And the thing that I, the way I see it okay. is the mm. monster mm. is out of their control now. Because I really think they tried to mm. crash it while Dangleberry was still in office so that he could remain supreme ruler for life because he was such a personable little puppet. You know, and he looked so cute dangling from those strings. But it didn't happen. Why? Because too many people believed in the money. They believed that it would make a comeback. It is that belief or the be life, Mm. that little bitty lie hiding in there got more powerful than they thought it was. And they really thought that they could convince everybody, it's all crashed. It's all, we're all going to die. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, and they're doing it in small baby steps instead of gigantic, colossal. This is just a little inch here, inch there. You don't even notice it. By the time you got the card, you'll go, wow, that was, what happened? How'd this happen? Because that's the way government works on the population, not us. We are the exception to the fucking rule. And then, oh, I know. and then in the RLM, they get a couple of people that come in here and claim to be voters and instigate a lot of bullshit about this and that and the other thing. But, in but the, you know what? That's their reality. That's another thing that who I knows? have to that, actually acknowledge is uh, that is their reality. Or they're just making up stories because they won't prove anything. They just type shit to be annoying without any proof. So And yet eh. once it's typed, it becomes part of their reality. Yeah, but it's it, it's just sad that that negative shit is what people are are really getting into right now. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, they're, they've been arguing for how many months have we been with this mass shit? Three and a half or four months solid of they're bad for you, they're good for you, they're bad for you, they're good for you. Since the end of March. <clears throat> okay, so whatever it's been, it's been months, and mm-hmm. still today. The same fucking dead-ass argument about fucking wearing a mask. And here's my challenge. And fuck, I know you didn't like it, but I'm telling you, if you you afford these fucking masks, why don't you strap one on your fucking pie hole and go out for a nice jog for a mile or two? And then tell me how fucking wonderful having that mask is. (laughs) You know why I think the mask thing is still... Mm -hmm. Is still a thing. It's a punishment. Because it became, it became an industry in and of itself. 
Mm-hmm. Now, there, when it initially started, there were an awful lot of people that went, ah, oh, bullshit. Ah, oh, bullshit. But then there were those those people that went, <laughs> wait a minute here. I can make a mask. I can make some money. Now we have boutiques and malls. Yeah, I know. Sell. I understand yeah. all that shit. But, oh, so it God. has become a monster in and of itself. You know, right. now, it, now it's become a revenue stream for lots of people. And, oh, my God, look at this. We created a whole new revenue stream. we got to build this shit up. All right. They killed $22 trillion worth of business on the planet globally. Yeah. And these yeah. fucking assholes have nothing better to offer the public than designer masks. This is what I'm saying. This is the pitiful fucking state the world is in right now. This is the highlight of your fucking life is to go and get a designer mask so that somebody else doesn't give you the flu and you get inconvenienced. And you know what? The Selfish response, fucking twats. Oh, Best sorry. response what? I have heard yet, question hmm. slash response, hmm. is, and it's just a short little video. I saw it on Twitter a week or so ago. Some guy went up to a gal with a cloth mask on. And he said, do panties hold in farts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she said no, and he went, enough said, and turned and walked away. Uh, hey, there's so much more to how what, what kind of deadly virus would you require to be pulled in and forced to take a test to see if you had it or not? If you had a fucking yeah. deadly virus, you'd be sick and fucking die. Yeah. Where's the yeah. deadly virus that we're all dying of at? I'm, I don't get it. What am I missing, Mary? The virus is so deadly that you have to go in and you have to get tested to find out if you've got it. Right. Yeah. So there's and just months on end of the same people with this sniveling little shit about their fucking virus. That's just it's – a, it's a movie. And I said it when it first started. This (laughs) is the first known case of a computer virus being transmitted to humans. (laughs) And that's what it is. (laughs) Because it's all mental. It's all in your fucking mind. Yeah. Unless. Now, here's where the, the, I think, the electronics and the uh, shots and shit come in, right? Is if Mm -hmm. if you've been inoculated for shit. I think that opens you up. You're susceptible to whatever this virus they let loose in. won't get all of us. It'll get the ones it's set upon. That's how that oh, yeah. worked. And they figured out and, how to yeah. get to the old. And now old. they're saying that that inoculation only gives you immunity for a limited amount of time. So you have to come back for a booster shot. Oh, if you're lame enough to let some fucking weirdo stick a needle and sh- put cum, you know, duck cum in your fucking blood, you go right ahead. Just stay the fuck away from me. That's all I ask. I want nothing to do with anybody that wants some stranger shoving a needle of God only knows what into their arm so they they can maybe not get the flu. It's stupid. It's less. It's worse than stupid. If, yeah. If that was one of my children, I'd slap them in the fucking head. And I got girls. But I don't. I hope you know. I never have to face something like that. They're so lame that they believe all this crap they're hearing. But they got mothers. SLC, Mike, they do not have enough jails for all the people that will tell them what they can do with those vaccinations. Oh, Even no, if it's no. only like no. 10% of the population that tells them what they they do not have enough jails. Plus, they've only got, what, a million cops they're outnumbered like 30 to 1 if you count well, the kids. Well, they're, they're defunding the cops, so... <laughs> oh, the cops stole enough money with asset forfeiture. They can run until 2040. Don't worry about the cops. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, with all that asset forfeiture, they can keep it for a while, but then it gets turned into the state. No, they're and armed you know and on drugs. Are, are you crazy? If they're not using steroids, they're probably doing coke. They shoot people for fun. They kill dogs just because they're there. The police. Okay, and that is one of those stereotyping things. Is it? Because I know some police officers that do care. not do that. I don't care. I do know some that are total Captain Assholio. Okay, there are no Captain Assholio cops I've ever seen here in six and a half years. Well, there six, you go. Over six years, right? Every, every encounter I've had with any form of law enforcement, 
It's always been friendly, a friendly wave or a gesture, how you doing, and you go on your way. Yeah. And most of the time when that happened, I was in uh, down in the city, right? And I was holding, but didn't hinder me from being decent to the cop I was passing by. You know, because when you act like you've got something to hide and you're worried about them bothering you, that's when they fucking should. It's exactly what they're for. So if you act, hey, what time is it, officer? Then they want to get away from you and leave us alone. (laughs) (laughs) See? So, well, you learn a thing or two as you grow up or you don't. Some people don't. Yeah. You know? The way way of the world is uh, kind of like a thing at the moment. It's one way here. It's another way there. It depends on the person, time of day, gender, all this other shit. You never know. But if you're cordial to people, you usually get a good response here. I very yes. seldom have I ever been just blatantly ignored. Some people are shy. I don't call that being ignored. You know, where they can't make eye contact with strangers they don't know. Yeah. See, Small town breeds a lot. Well, some of these people never really been out of Denmark. And, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't know. I'm just saying they're not worldly people. So when they don't make eye contact, I just figure it out. They're just local. And they, you know, they know I'm a stranger. They might not know where from or all that, but they don't care. They just want me to be a go way I'm I'm Danish. And there's a bit of that. Yeah. It's not overwhelming where I feel like I'm ostracized or anything, but I notice every once in a while some people just don't give a flan fuck, just like me. They're no different. They just speak funny. They can you say know, words to, that I have to... I'm trying to picture a flying fuck. Give I, me I have minute. to be having sex to speak Danish because it's, it's all that <laughs> funny noises that come out of you when you don't want them to. <laughs> How's that? How's that for an explanation to make the right? Huh? 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 I never said it like that before. Anyway, we're coming to the end of in an imperfect world, but we argued about every possible thing I could think of tonight, and I'm going to work on a, a question I want to ask you, where I'm going to ask you the question, but I'm going to have the answer written down already. Oh, okay. Look. Okay. And there's the phone yeah. one more time. Anyway, yeah, I need to. Boy, need to check that. you were venting on on me tonight. Yes, I was. I brought I, the, I'm releasing the evil spirits. I brought the beast <laughs> out of Miss Mary. You're welcome, everybody. Not everybody has that ability, <laughs> and lives to talk about it. <laughs> True. Wow. True. But you know those filthy Corona supporters. I hope each and every one of them gets exactly what they want everybody else to have. See, and that's, yeah, I I have a, I know there's, I used to say, someone ought to string them up. Someone no, ought to do this. Someone no, no, no. But now I am of a mind that I need to be very, very careful what I, yeah. energy I put out there, yeah. uh, what vibration hey, I put check. out there. Yeah. And so I just always wish for everyone, everyone to receive, re, blah, blah, receive <laughs> exactly what they have earned, exactly mm. what they have worked for, mm. exactly what they have put out. Oh yeah, wise. I just go. I with hope it. they yeah. receive yeah. back. Yeah. Well, I just cut cut out all that nice shit and just go right for the throat. That way, if you got bad intentions, because I I don't think I do. When I encounter other people, I don't remember ever looking at somebody and thinking, oh, I wish you the fucking worst in life. I hope you drop dead and choke on your own vomit in front of your wife and your kids, you sorry prick. No, those things don't come to mind. But when I'm typing on the Internet, sometimes I think of it. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) Go figure. You know why? Why? Because we're rude to each other on the interwebs. Over well, just to and it's to an excess. It's just so fucking cool to be a nasty fuck on the internet now. Everybody's doing it. Yeah. Well. Eh. The more insulting and the nastier you can be, the more points you get in that realm. It's a status. 
I'm a nastier fuck than you, you weakling. <laughs> wow, what a thing to compete for. But that's what I huh. see. That's what I see the world coming to. I'm being a negative Nelly tonight. I'm crying like a little bitch. <laughs> 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 and I'm just laughing at you. Why? Because what the hell? Crying well, don't fake uh, okay. it, so I may as well laugh. In my own way, I was just trying to point out, not blame, because I'm as guilty as anybody else, trying to take that perspective off of blame and just put it on the reality is there's something in life right now that's just not right, and we're all reacting badly to it. And because we're acting out, we're taking it out on each other instead of, fixing anything <laughs> it's it's crazy mm. and i decided today well when i saw what i saw the way i'm i'm seeing it i may not explain it this well yet i'll get to it ah. someday what one day well maybe you have to if it has my attention it requires my attention and some things ah, i don't give two shits about and that's the way it is and other things i don't know why i care about them but i do so i address them Face the player and see what's going on. You know, call that fucking hand. Sometimes they're bluffing. You never know until you call. Sure. Well, calling is a ooh. It's it's not as easy to do as people think. Because when you call, the other guy's responsible to show. And when you call in yeah. the RLM room or any other chat room, I'm just using the RLM as an example. Most people that have a negative argument have no proof to back up their side of the argument. But it doesn't stop them from repeating the same horse shit time after fucking time after time with nothing to prove they're tra telling you anything that's valid. And it gets a little frustrating, you know. The, my, uh, my 40 listeners out there, I'm sure they understand. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they do. Well, I, I think I get like, I don't know, I've got a hardcore 40 out there. But Grim puts <laughs> – well, I, I wouldn't expect a lot of people to really be in tune with me the way that I speak anyway. I I would be amazed that if it was any more than what it is. It's like, wow. Because I, I was trying to tell you what, years ago, I said, when they're really, really desperate, the Internet will be flooded. All these people will they'll, – they'll seek each other out through small rooms like this. They'll flood the Internet with small sites where 40 or 50 people gather because that's how this will work. This is what will get us through it. it, whatever it may be. Your connection to this little bit of reality on the Internet is it's a big piece of what will protect you emotionally in the future, I think. Possibly. Yeah. Well, Grimp started with uh, talking about the Federal Reserve Bank and the reality of that. So... The first step to your own personal understanding is realizing completely that the money is not real. How you interpret that is not a matter of, see, this is what I mean about the question, you can't not answer a certain, it's got to be a certain way. And when it comes to finance, we're living in a fantasy, but we're convinced that it's real and it is not. And they'll say, well, that's just your opinion. Okay. That may very well be, but look around you. Take a better look at what's going on. If it, you know, if it matters. If it doesn't matter, blow it off and go smoke a joint. You know, do something creative. But if you're into the politics of this shit, investigate the fucking money. And once you understand the true nature of this, then you realize the rest of it's just all stories. We're just bouncing stories off each other, going through life, pretending to pay bills. We are experiencing physical reality, basically. And everybody will experience it differently because everybody is different. And that's cool. It's just the way it is. I know. You can't do anything about it. But the frustrating part about being agreed with on every little point about every fucking thing you believe, because you're, what? What? You're, either you're right or you're not. And why it's got to be said 37,000 times, I don't know. But I guess that's what we do. We're repetitious weirdos that don't, that, you know, we don't have mommies. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the bonus part about me having my mommy is that 
you know, she's like 50 first dates. Mm. And so <laughs> <laughs> you never I yeah. can tell her something and two hours later she'll go, so what's going on? And I can tell wow. her the same damn story and it's like it's all new. So wow. Yeah, they, but you said they're fixing all that with the food such. Well, they're not fixing all of the memory oh, issues, but they are no. fixing other issues. So okay. she, is, she is doing better. Hmm. Her cognition is better. Hmm. It is, you know, instead of every five minutes, it's now about every two hours. But still, oh, you know, it's still 50 first dates. And so, but she's she's going to be 89 in a week. So, you know, I figure she's she's had a hell of a run, and she had 10 of us, and we fight over who gets to talk to her on the phone. So she did good. That's what you were saying. <laughs> We're about we're about ready to shut this here thing down. Yeah, and I probably need to call my mom back because she has called twice now. So. All righty. Well, I, we're going to close this one out. Thank you, Miss Mary, for joining me tonight on In a Perfect World and arguing with me about all the fun stuff we disagreed about. Well, thank you. I had a good time <laughs> and rambling and ranting and squirreling on you oh. and all that fun stuff. And yes, Chloe, ten yeah. kids. And I am the oldest daughter out of those. There's seven boys and three girls. So yeah, never intre or never boring around our house. That's for darn sure. So see you on Saturday, little Missy. As far as I know, yes, I will be around. And for those of you out there in the real Liberty Media range, go to the RLM, and we have a schedule with all the shows and all the people that do them. See ya. See you. Love you. Bye.